I'd like to talk to you about languages, the languages of Europe, the languages of the world, and the world of languages. Uh, basically, multilingualism. Multilingualism is a concept that we use uh, in Brussels, uh, but most people don't really understand what multilingualism is. What they're interested in is their own language and that it should be spoken, and, and we very much agree with that, and we try to make sure that Europe speaks your language. First of all, we try not only to make, the, to make sure that your language is spoken, but we try to encourage all citizens to speak their mother tongue, of course, but also two other languages. This is uh, the objective of the language policy of the European Commission. And, uh, well, some people think that's ridiculously ambitious. Some people think it's uh, far too easy. It depends where you come from. It depends where you live. In a frontier region, speaking two languages is nothing special. In the world in general, multilingualism is the rule, not the exception. In Papua New Guinea, they have over 800 languages and dialects. In Iceland, they have one language. But one language countries are definitely the exception. So is Papua New Guinea, but most countries have more than one language. That's the point I'm trying to make. Even the United States, whose motto is a pluribus unum, that's Latin, of course, uh, means from several into one, it's no longer just English. In fact, there was no legislation in the United States to say that English was the official language because there was never a need. It was just taken for granted, except the situation has changed. There are more and more people who speak Spanish, and more and more states who are either legislating to say that English is the official language or that English and Spanish are the official languages. There's also uh, a kind of backlash, if you like, from the Spanish speakers who say, no, uh, we don't want uh, Spanish-only schools or a Spanish-only universe because our sons, our children, must learn English properly. Otherwise, their future will be very limited, which is very wise when you think about it. So multilingualism is something which is very useful and very common. And the exception is not to be multilingualism. Look at Africa. In Africa, it's quite commonplace to speak four or five languages every day, as a matter of course, in your daily business, not simply to show off or, or to do something special. And it is a very valuable bonding process to speak somebody else's language. The relationship with somebody else changes radically if you speak their language. When Mrs. Thatcher met Mr. Gorbachev all those years ago, she came back with the very welcome message, which she intended to be very constructive. We speak the same language. We can do business together. It was, of course, figurative. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, it's a very revealing phrase. All together in the world, experts estimate there are around 6,300 languages, something like that. Some are dying out. Some only have a few speakers left. One I read of in the other day, whose name escapes me, uh, only had one speaker left, and she was busy relating her language to uh, a linguistic anthropologist so that some trace of it could be left. That sounds remarkably sad. But I hope she finished before she dies. But the point is that, uh, on average, one language is dying every fortnight. It is estimated. I'm repeating figures uh, given by language experts here. Other people also say that it's going to accelerate much more and that in 50 years' time we will only have 100 languages left. I find that one particularly hard to, to believe, to be honest. Uh, I can understand that uh, certain outlying languages may disappear as the tribes come into more and more contact with civilization or as uh, the state, whichever state it is, imposes or, or necessitates uh, a single language, but I don't think that we'll be going as far down as 100 languages yet. On the other hand, I was absolutely flabbergasted to read that only 200 languages are or have a written form. That too, I find hard to believe. But the experts are the experts. The point that I'm trying to make is that speaking your mother tongue and two languages is nothing special. In fact, Commissioner Redding, uh, who used to be in charge of education and, uh, and language learning, uh, said at the end of one of her presentations, even the little Luxembourgers speak three or four languages as a matter of course. Why should anybody else have more difficulty? Which was a very telling comment. What I think is important is that we should understand that the language is much more than just a means of communication or a means of expression. There are two sides to it. One is expression, 
and the other is self-expression. In other words, identity and language are very intertwined. It's virtually impossible to separate them out. And this is why, in a globalizing world, more and more people are concerned about keeping their language or about officializing their language. We just had two completely contradictory developments, for example, uh, in the European Union uh, a couple of uh, two years ago. We adopted uh, the possibility of uh, speakers in Catalan, in Basque, and Galician, uh, which are not official languages, but which could be spoken, given advance warning, etc., uh, where ministers of that, uh, of that language were present. On the other hand, in France, the decision has been taken now not to accept regional languages or not to give them official recognition. So there is no single cure, there is no single answer. Uh, each answer will be found by the particular country and languages uh, concerned. Uh, there is no one-size-fits-all solution to this. On the other hand, it would be a shame if these languages were lost, since they are also uh, containers of tradition, of identity and culture. Thank you.